Hi, David Vizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. If you care to give me a few minutes of your time, I'll give you the benefit of many years of race winning experience. In this edition of Paratech 10, we're going to continue the modification of the 2.2 uh, Chrysler heads for Richard Holdener. In this episode, or this is part two of the episode you'll see up in the corner there, uh, we're going to look at combustion chamber design and valve shrouding. So let's take it away on that subject. Before we get going here, I'd just like to thank Steve uh, Mercier from who hails from Lewiston and uh, uh, say thanks for saving me all the time for cutting up these head sections I've got here, right? Save me a cylinder head and a good few hours of working time. Anyway, thanks Steve, much appreciated. Our subject this time around is de-shrouding the chambers. This following clip will show what valve shrouding is. Well, here is our demonstration of shrouding. This is the worst case scenario here. It doesn't matter how high we lift the valve, just here only an amount of air allowed by the size of this gap here can flow. Of course, as the chamber moves away from the cylinder wall, we've got more space here. Now, Chrysler engineers did a pretty good job of making this amount here representative of what the head needs and what does it need. We can say that whatever the efficiency of the valve seat is locally at the lift concerned, we need an equivalent amount between the valve and here. Question is, do we have enough on this head? And the answer is no. Why? Because we've increased the flow efficiency of the seat by quite a bit. So there's more air wants to come by here and thus it needs more room. The question is how much? Right, now we're back to the subject of dealing with valve shrouding such that we eliminate as much of it as possible. There are three tried and tested means of doing this, and I think two of them are probably mine. Right? Uh, and not that I haven't exercised the other one. The most common way of doing it, and this is how most serious uh, cylinder head porters would do it, is to keep cutting away the offending metal, and that is the chamber, um, until there's no flow increase and uh, that's where they leave it. Now, that works, but it consumes an inordinate amount of time. And if you don't have a flow bench, you can't do it that way. What I'm going to show is a very basic method which this Chrysler head very much lends itself to because it's a bathtub chamber to do a, what I call a geometric shrouding we cut away the chamber, uh, bearing in mind what the discharge coefficient will be on the short side and the long side. Now I've said this before in many videos, discharge coefficient is the flow efficiency of the valve and seat. If we look at the seat as uh, an entity on its own, we find that the discharge coefficient on the short side is always lower than it is on the long side. And this is because a lot of air doesn't make it round the short side term. What we are going to do here is we are going to cut away the chamber where possible such that it has the flow capability locally between the valve and the chamber which is marginally better than the flow capability of the seat in the immediate vicinity uh, of where we're cutting it away. You'll see what I mean. 
Now the other way to do it is with a flow ball and what you do is you start working away with a flow ball which has a certain ratio of diameter to the lift that you put into the valve. Now I'm not going to show that method here it really doesn't apply because it's a bathtub chamber and the floor of the chamber is essentially flat. So I am going to do the, uh, I'm not sure what to call it here, the compass and local discharge uh, method. Now what it will do for us in this instance is get us a chamber which gets to be uh, uh, very nearly optimally deshrouded within the confines of what we've got. So let's start on that. Before starting to mark out the chambers to see where we're going to cut them, we're going to have to indulge in a little bit of math. I only could call it geometry or trigonometry even, but here is what we need to look at here behind me. The first thing we need to take into consideration is the discharge coefficient or flow efficiency of the seat at any particular point in its circumference. Now the long side discharge coefficient on a seat cut nicely reaches about 0.7 to 0.75 right but on the short side because it has to go around a sharp corner or a relatively sharp corner the best it does is about 0.65. Now, we also have a chamber which is not the same depth all the way across. The chamber depth, oh you'll notice I've got to put a T in there. Now I spotted this after I would got to here. And uh, sure I need to learn to spell better, maybe, but you know anyone who can only spell a word one way doesn't have much imagination. But anyway, on with the plot. The short side chamber depth is 400 thousandths. The long side chamber depth is 650. Now, intake valve is 1.6, exhaust valve is 1.4. The radius of each of those, that's 0 0.8 and 0 0.7. Now we're going to use these numbers here to calculate what we're going to cut the chamber away and then mark it out with a compass. Using the numbers I showed in the last clip, we enter them into this formula here. Right, it's pretty simple. This is the valve radius and we're going to be using the intake so that will be 0.8 of an inch plus the chamber depth times the CD, that's 0.65, that's 650 thousandths times 0.75. So 0.8 times the contents of that bracket comes to 1.287. So what do we do with the number we've just uh, calculated? We set it on a dial caliper. 1.287. Next we take our scriber and very carefully adjust it to that dimension. That looks about good to trot there. Next we scribe out the chamber on the long side. Remember this side is going to be a different dimension to that side. So now we repeat this on all the chambers. When we put the numbers into our simple equation uh, for the short side turn, we find that number comes out for this head at 0.96. Setting our calibers to that dimension, we find that the chamber is already cut away more than enough for the job. So there'll be nothing to do on that side. This leaves us having to remove, for the intake deshrouding that is, having to remove this bit here. That I'll show you being done and we will flow the cylinder head. We will deal with the shrouding on the exhaust because it's a whole different deal uh, in the way the chamber's done around here. 
We'll deal with that down the road a while. Here I have the head set up on my mill and uh, I'm going to use the uh, Goodson 3D equipment to sweep out the chamber, do a top cut on the seats and just rough dress in the seats ready for all the chamber work. Now I have to tell you I used to have a uh, $55,000 surdy to do this and uh, it did a nice job but it was much too bulky a piece of equipment to have when I made the decision to build a shop underneath the house. Right so here I'm using a mill and the goods and stuff and I've managed to get a seat and guide machine up and running for a total cost of about twelve thousand dollars and it doubles up as a mill and that can't be bad anyway the first move is to sweep out the chamber here right down and just touch the top of the valve seat with um, a cutter like so and I don't know if you can see that but I'll put a close-up in later on it's going to cut right that form there and that there is about 18 degrees Here's the sweep done. You can see that I've taken it down just far enough to get rid of those ridges that are at the top of all the valve seats There's on the exhaust there as an example. Also note that I've cut it to just shy of the line that we marked out for the gasket. Our next move, oh also note that I've taken a bit of the spark plug boss out that can be a little bit of a restriction there but we've got to be careful not to take too much out because we have to transmit heat from the plug into the cylinder head so we need some mass around there so there'll be some careful reshaping here and what we'll probably do with the spark plug is use an extra washer and push the spark plug back by the thickness of a washer Anyway, here we are. We are now ready to just do a top cut on the seat. Here's one of the chambers. It's about done now. I've done all the intakes. Now I'm just going to go over and do the exhausts on the other three cylinders. At this point, I'm just ready to start cutting the chambers. And this is the form of cutter I'm using. This is the most important bit done here. This is the long side roughed out ready for a detailed finish. Now I'm going to tackle the other three corners of this chamber. Okay, now it's time for something a little different. Not that what we've done so far hasn't been a little different, but this you could say is the uh, crowning glory on bathtub chamber mods. I applied this mod as well as the techniques I've just shown you to a TR3 four-cylinder two-liter engine way back when and uh, uh, it worked very well if the race results had anything to do with it 
I think it won about 9 out of 10 races and if it didn't win it's because it got tangled up in the traffic. Uh, we stopped using that engine because it made enough horsepower to get grossly unreliable and I was rebuilding it after every race. Not good since I was sponsoring the guy. Anyway we went to a cross flow forward and that did the same thing even with uh, 240cc less but uh, on with the plot here. This is where we are with the chamber so far, right? Now this is probably the point at which most chamber modification videos would stop. But we've got more to do. We are going to look at what happens during the period where the quench action takes place at the most energetic. When the piston comes up, here like this just before TDC it's going to fire out the the uh, uh, gases in here very high speed right and they're not going to make it around this corner period right nor this one nor this one now you might say well that's the quench action taking place well it is but let's be a little more scientific about it right we have ports which go out that way we don't want the quench here firing the gases over the top of the valve so we're going to round this corner off here right not only does it help the flow a little bit but it makes a lot of difference to how gases can go from a chamber contained like this down into the chamber and under the exhaust here this is the short side we only want a small amount of radius here because this side here we don't want too much flow because it will interrupt the flow on this side right so a little bit of chamber rounding on the edge there and quite a bit here now on the exhaust we do quite an extensive roll on this side right what i'm going to do here and i'll show you how this is done what i'm going to do is i'm going to round this corner off extensively so that as the piston comes up the bore gases contained can go around this corner very much like radius a radius uh, onto the intake in a, in a carbureted engine you know you want that carburetor to have nice radiuses going into the venturi well, the valve area represents our venturi. This represents the top edge of the carburetor. On this side, we don't want quite as much radius, but we do want some. So you're going to see me radius it round here and round here. So let's get cracking on that. Here's the long side roughed in. and the short side. Short of just its final polish, here is the finished chamber. Now let me run you through what's done here. Short side turn, that's the short side of the... bit bigger radius in this corner here, but getting less as it goes across here, right? This is to favor the exhaust flow. We don't want to favor it too much. As we come around here, much bigger radius, right? This is the biggest radius, and it goes down about halfway down the chamber, down to about here, right? And it blends out all the way along the cylinder wall, gasket line, to about, well, you can see about along here. Less of a radius here but a fairly substantial one across here. Remember, the intake charge is going to come out and it's going to come across here, right? We need to do this bit here to help favor any swirl. Also, by cutting the quench here, which would go that way, 
we tend to let the swirl, any swirl that may be there, be less inhibited. And here is the finished chamber. And I may as well point it out again. This radius here blends in smoothly into this here, right? What you're trying to do is to get the flow to come up here, over here, and into the quench area. And on this side, you're trying to get the exhaust that's being forced out by the piston to make it round this corner as the piston makes its close approach to the quench area. Right, so with that, let's go to the flow bench. Well, here's a graph of the flow before and after the chamber mods. Here's what we achieved with just the port modification, the thin line. Here is what we got with the chamber mods. Now again, because of the scale, it doesn't look that big. So, let us look at the discharge coefficient. Here we have the before and after discharge coefficient. You'll notice we picked up a lot of flow or a great deal of efficiency at the 50 thousandths mark here. Now this was almost certainly because of the ridge that existed in the chamber just after the air comes in through the intake valve. By making the seat much more efficient, we've jumped the uh, efficiency of it right up to here, about almost 80%. As you can see, this better seat and exit out of the intake valve paid off everywhere. Right now, what this represents here is the amount of improvement we're, we're looking at. So this gives you a good idea of what happened when we got things a bit more efficient. Now let's look at where we started off. Here's the stock flow. Here's our flow with the port and chamber done. You can see a pretty big increase there. We are bordering 220 CFM, which is very good for a 1.6 inch intake valve. Let's look at that in terms of the discharge coefficient. Big increase in efficiency, which is what we want, right? We don't want flow because we've got big ports. We want flow because we've got efficient ports. And now let's look at port energy. See how that's looking. Right, port energy. We've improved the port energy everywhere. This port will work. As for swirl, we have improved it. This, here's the swirl with just the intake port modified. Right, you can see we killed quite a bit of swirl from our original. Here's the swirl we have now, and it looks like, well, we fixed the problem, but we're only at 680. Uh, RPM um, on the swirl paddle and uh, so let me show you where we were when we started off because that looks slightly different. This is the swirl on the stock head. Most of it occurs only at high lift so wasn't that meaningful for us, right? Here's where we are now. We've improved it over uh, the uh, just the port done, but uh, it's still not uh, very big, right? In practice, the lift will be about here. So swirl, eh, we're just slightly worse off, right? But we should be able to make up for that by having the uh, quench clearance pretty close. Well, that about wraps up our addition here. And... Uh, You've got the exhaust port section to still look forward to here. At this point, though, I would like to ask that you like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell, right? We need subscribers to continue this series. So help us help you to go fast. Thank you.